Hello, welcome to the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance's 2020 topic-based video series. In this series, we'll review basic concepts and ideas pertinent not only to engineers new to short span steel bridge design, but those looking for a refresher of fundamental concepts. This is the second part of a two-part series focused on eSpan 140, a complementary web-based resource for the preliminary design of short span steel bridges. The goals of this video will be to review the background on the development of eSpan 140 and to complete a real-time example for a typical short span project. We'll review the goals and design parameters of the design standards used in the development of eSpan 140 and then go through a timed execution of an eSpan project. As stated in part one, the goals for developing a series of short span steel bridge design standards were to provide the engineer an easy to use tool for preliminary design. Specifically, these standards are, are designed to be economically competitive, to expedite and economize the design process, and utilize simple repetitive details and member sizes. The standards themselves consist of a series of girders designed for short span bridges and span lengths ranging from 40 feet to 140 feet in five foot increments. For each of these increments, four different girder spacings were utilized, and for each of those increments, four different girder options were designed, two plate girder options and two rolled beam solutions. For each of these options, a full short span steel bridge design was completed. From the bearing to the deck, every fabrication detail plate size and associated dimension has been provided to the user for preliminary design. To access the standards, all you need to do is go to eSpan140.com, create a user's account, and then start a project. Once you've input your specific project details, eSpan 140 will generate a customized solutions book that contains all of the necessary information con to construct a typical short span bridge based on your input. eSpan provides standard designs and details for rolled beams and plate girders, as well as buried bridge solutions. You can also find uh, on the website a series of manufacturer steel solutions for your project, information on coating solutions, as well as industry contacts. To demonstrate the use of eSpan 140, we will begin by reviewing the parameters for an example project. We'll term this project the John Smith Bridge. The status of this project will be for preliminary design. We'll assume it's located in Huntington, West Virginia, carrying traffic over Main Street, and we'll assume that the bridge is 82 feet 4 inches long. Note that eSpan will take this span length round it up to the next uh, five foot increment, which would be 85 feet, and report the solution for an 85 foot girder. We'll assume this bridge has two traffic lanes. Uh, it's a 30 foot roadway width. We'll assume each parapet is one foot three inches wide and that the overhang width is three feet long. For this example, we'll assume that no sidewalks or pedestrian access is on this particular project. However, eSpan 140 does grant the user to specify one or two sidewalks. We'll assume a 15 degree skew angle. We'll assume average daily traffic somewhere between 501 and 2000 vehicles per day. And we'll assume a design speed anywhere from zero to 45 miles per hour. Last, Dependent upon your input, eSpan uh, may ask for uh, data related to buried bridge solutions. For the, to this effect, we'll assume a waterway area of 500 square feet. We'll assume the minimum span uh, at the bottom of the structure to be 60 feet uh, and the height from the invert to the bottom of the road surface to be 25 feet for our project. Next, we'll open up a web browser, go to eSpan 140 and begin the process of completing uh, this input. Here you can see we have a web browser open and eSpan 140 has been accessed. You can see that uh, I've logged into my user profile and I'm ready to start a new project. I've also included a timer on the lower right corner of the screen so we can track how long it will take to complete a project. 
With that, we'll go ahead and get started. I will start a new project and start the timer at the same time. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll go through the data that was reviewed on the slides and input the parameters for this project. So we'll say that this is the John Smith Bridge. Uh, for the project status, we'll assume preliminary design. We'll take this bridge to be located in Huntington, West Virginia. We'll say it's carrying traffic Main Street. And we'll assume that it is 82 feet, 4 inches long. We'll hit next. We stated that this bridge would uh, contain two traffic lanes. Uh, the roadway width for this particular structure was going to be 30 foot long. Uh, each of the parapet widths was going to be 15 inches or one foot three inches wide. Uh, and each of the deck overhangs will be three feet wide. Notice that as I'm entering the input, the appropriate fields are highlighted on the images shown. That way, if you ever uh, have any questions about or are confused about what a particular value is, Eastband will highlight that, uh, that option for you. For this bridge, we're not going to uh, include any sidewalks. Uh, our skew angle is going to be 15 degrees. Our average daily traffic is going to be 501 to 2,000 vehicles per day and we're going to assume a design speed of zero to 45 miles per hour. We'll hit next, a waterway area of 500 square feet, a minimum span of, I believe it was 60 feet, and the height from the bottom of the road surface is 25 feet. Then we just hit next, and then as you can see, Eastman summarizes our input to ensure that everything is correct. We can always go back and change things if we need. Hit yes uh, on the disclaimer. Hit finish. And as you can see, Eastman is now generating the custom solutions book. And once the solutions book is generated, we'll call the time and that'll be the, the, the timed event or the timed uh, exercise. All right, and as you can see, we've completed our, our de uh, design, and as you can see, the customized solutions book is ready for download. Here you can see the downloaded eSpan 140 customized solutions book. Uh, I won't go through every detail, but I'll highlight some of the key points uh, worth reviewing. So as we go through the uh, the customized solutions book, you'll see some information about the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance as well as the Bridge Technology Center. You'll also see the specific project details that you input for this uh, given project. You'll also uh, see the solutions generated based on your input. So here's the general design notes as well as one of the design solutions. This is the composite plate girder uh, that's of the homogeneous uh, variety. You can see each of the flange sizes, the web sizes. You can see the cambers listed, the stud layouts, the diaphragm spacing. You can see similar data for hybrid options as well as rolled beam solutions. See typical fabrication details uh, as well as uh, uh, bent plate diaphragm details. You can see the framing plan and, and uh, various construction and fabrication notes, as well as a typical section uh, highlighting stud layout across the top flange. You can also see the uh, typical deck reinforcement shown, uh, as well as um, elastomeric bearing details. Uh, you can also see solutions that were reported for buried structures. Uh, you can see single radius arches. You can see uh, box culverts uh, and the like. Also, as was noted, you can see the contact information for various members in the Alliance that can assist you in delivering this project uh, in real life.
This concludes this video of the Shortspan Steel Bridge Alliance's topic-based video series. We hope you found this video informative and look forward to, you, look forward to having you joining us in the next video. Thank you for your time.